Hello and welcome to Garden City Community Chat, episode number 616, with your hosts Carrie, Tom, and Mike. Their guest for tonight is Mary Gills McLaughlin. She'll be here to share with us her experience teaching in Alaska. Enjoy the show. Well, hello, Garden City and all our friends in the neighboring communities. This is episode number 616 of the Garden City Community Chat Show. It's Thursday, March 30th, 2023. We're so happy you could be with us tonight. We hope you're all safe and doing well. I am your host, Carrie. Also joining me tonight are my co-hosts, Garden City's very own meteorologist, Dr. Tom Iwinski. Tom, how you doing? Doing well. Uh, a little chillier today, but it was nice to see the sun. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Also, uh, former Garden City Councilman and past president of the Garden City Kiwanis, Mr. Mike Jones. How you doing, Mike? Outstanding, Kerry, but I'm improving. Thank you. Well, that's great. That's great. I wish the Tigers did today. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they uh, <laughs> sort of forgot to score runs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Hey, tonight we got a good one for you. Uh, have you ever been uh, to Alaska or is Alaska on your bucket list? Well, we have someone here tonight uh, who recently came back from teaching in Alaska. Mary Gills McLaughlin is here to share her unbelievable experience with you. Also, Joe Bartley is uh, here from J&J &J Taxes and more with another informative tax talk for you uh, as we get closer to the filing deadline, uh, deadline of April 18th. He's going to answer one question that he most frequently gets at least once a week. So stay tuned for that. And Tom is going to be here shortly with the latest weather forecast for you. See if we uh, have any dry, warm weather coming our way. But first, if you're watching us live on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and post your questions and comments in the comments section or email us at gccommunitychat at gmail.com. You can also text us. At 734-788-9319. Our email address is there right under my name. You can email us. We also want to take a quick minute to say thank you to all of you who listen and support us every Thursday night, not only from our hometown of Garden City, but several of our surrounding communities as well. We really appreciate everyone's support. And remember, we'll continue to promote not only our community, but yours as well. And speaking of community, if your organization or business has any events or announcements or cancellations that you'd like to get out to our listeners, what should they do, Mike? I would suggest they email us, Gary. Right. Email the details to us at gccommunitychat at gmail.com or message us on Facebook at facebook.com slash gcchat. And Mike will be more than happy to pass that information along. That's right. We also encourage any local business to check out and join the Garden City Business Alliance and see what great things they can uh, do for you. For more information, go to GardenCityBusinessAlliance.org. Okay, let's get Tom in here now with... Excuse me. Yes. Hi. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Chat's here too behind me. <laughs> 
How you doing, dear? <laughs> well, let's give a shout out to the camera shy. <laughs> we have Barb Reddy in there. Hello, Barb. How are you? Michael Bingle's in there. Good to see you. Patty Fix is in there. Also, uh, Kathy Ward, our number one fan. Former Mayor Randy Walker is in there. How you doing there, Randy? Good to see you. He was actually in Alaska, so he can probably relate to a lot of this. So uh, we'll be talking about that shortly. So let's get Tom in here now with a quick check of the weather. Well, not a quick check, but a check of the weather. So stand by for Tom. <laughs> Okay, let's do a check on weather with Doppler Tom. Let's see what he has in store for the rest of this week and the weekend coming up. Tom, take it away. Okay, Tom, what you got? We got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, a lot of active weather still is going to be kind of on the horizon. Uh, we have been out with quite a bit of rain uh, over the last couple of weeks or so, mm. just anti rain showers. A uh, little bit of winter weather, but that's pretty much behind us now. We're now transitioning into more of a spring-like pattern. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, with that, it's going to come with more rounds of rain uh, every couple of days through the next week or so. And uh, our next round is going to start to move in kind of around dawn tomorrow and continue through Friday and into Saturday as well. So uh, it's not going to rain the entire stretch of that time, but by the time we get around dawn tomorrow, that's when our next slug of rain begins to move into our neck of the woods, and it will continue to rain until probably around the early afternoon hours. And there's going to be a brief lull on activity, maybe a complete break of things between kind of the afternoon and early evening before our next batch begins to move in kind of after dark. Um, so there will be a few hours of some dry time, probably from 2 to probably 7 p.m. or so, just before dark time. And then our next batch begins to move in. And then we're going to deal with yet another rainy evening um, and then overnight hours. And then pretty much ending by the time we get into early Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And the ending will come with this front moving through. So throughout the day tomorrow, in and out of that rain, we'll kind of get into the upper 50s to lower 60s. So pretty mild when uh, you speak of it. But we're just going to be dealing with rounds of rain um, throughout that entire period. And then the front moves through, and then it's going to significantly uh, cool down behind the system. Uh, we're going to be dealing with kind of a high uh, temperature uh, well into kind of the morning hours. So kind of around the sunrise time frame is when we're going to have a higher temperature, and then temperatures are going to drop pretty much after that. So we're probably going to deal with temperatures probably – in the mid 50s for a high temperature right around sunrise and then we're going to drop into the 40s for the rest of the day and getting into the 20s for overnight low saturday night so uh, we're going to continue to see those temperatures drop behind the system after kind of these two rounds of rain that moves through um starting tonight and into uh early friday and then that break during the afternoon friday and then another round of rain Friday evening into Saturday morning. And as that front moves through with those dropping temperatures, we're also going to be seeing those strong winds back into the forecast. I know it's been fairly windy with these systems as they move through with the rain as well. And uh, we're gonna see yet another a pretty good whipping uh, wind with uh, gusts potentially 40 to 45 miles an hour again with these uh, systems moving through. So uh, kind of a busy next kind of 24 to 48 hours. And then things kind of relax a little bit as we get into Sunday. Uh, we're going to see uh, the sun come back. Um, we're going to see a, a chillier day, though. We're going to see temperatures staying into kind of the mid-40s for high temperatures on Sunday after that system moves through on Saturday. Um, but the good news is, is that these uh, cool downs are not going to last very long. We're actually going to get pretty warm again getting back into Monday. Um, starting a new week, we're probably going to jump back into the uh, low to mid-60s, so uh, warming back up. And uh, we're probably going to stay dry for a good portion of the day on Monday until we get into kind of the uh, evening hours, probably after seven, eight o'clock, we're gonna see yet our next round of rain begin to move in Monday night and into Tuesday. And uh, then we'll see some more breaks and then getting into next week, we're seeing some pretty good indications that it's gonna stay kind of on the rainy side. So we're probably gonna deal with yet another batch Tuesday night and into Wednesday uh, as well with yet another pretty good potent system moving through the, uh, the, uh, the Great Lakes as uh, we oh, are yeah. Yeah, just an active pattern with rain, uh, cooling down temperatures, some wind, 
warming up again ahead of these systems. Then the rain begins to move in, cools back down, and then we're going to warm things back up again. We're actually going to see temperatures warming back up uh, on Wednesday with our next round of systems move through, probably into the uh, 60s to 70s. So there's going to be quite a bit of fluctuation um, with this. And as you warm up a little bit more as we get into the spring months, that's when you really start getting into the juicier atmosphere. So uh, right. heavy rain is fairly likely getting into next week as well. Um, we're probably going to see maybe some embedded thunderstorms with this activity as well. So it's going to be a very active week next week uh, with the spring-like pattern really developing with kind of these fluctuating temperatures moving through. The good news is, is that after Wednesday, um, kind of just in and out of these storms, we're actually going to probably dry things out to end the work week uh, into next week. Probably dealing with that, that cool down again, probably dealing with temperatures into the upper 40s to lower 50s for Thursday and into Friday with drying conditions. And then yet probably some more activity over the uh, Easter um, Easter weekend. I can't even talk about it. Uh, but yeah, that's a little bit more rain over the week, uh, Easter weekend and uh, probably some milder temperatures as well. So we'll fine tune those details as we get closer. But Overall, the consensus is the spring is really getting comfortable. Uh, it's really going to start moving in. And uh, by the time we get into uh, the end of March and into April, those April showers will definitely bring those May flowers because our, our uh, pattern is really going to be conducive for uh, rounds of rain to move through um, with some milder temperatures. So staying fairly active here. But the good news is, is there's no snow in the forecast. I don't expect any Yay. accumulating snow. I expect any uh, sneaky systems to really move in. Uh, these are all going to be rain uh, systems that move through uh, the, our neck of the woods. <coughs> I know a lot of people probably want some good soaking rains to really bring the grasses and the gardens back alive and uh, really rejuvenating a lot of the uh, soil from that cold and uh, brutal kind of winter that we had over the last uh, month, uh, last couple months. So uh, yeah, spring is really sprung, if you will, right on cue. And uh, we're definitely going to enjoy um, the milder air. And if you want the rain, you're definitely going to enjoy that as well at times. So <laughs> kind of we're dealing with a pretty active pattern. Um, other than that, it's been fairly busy across the country. As you probably know, uh, they're still dealing with that aftermath across Mississippi with all those tornadoes moving through, um, mm -hmm. quite a bit of damage down there. And uh, there's been quite a bit of just severe weather all across the southern U.S. And uh, there's going to be a lot more of that going into the next couple of days and into wow. next week as well. Um, right now, it appears that we're going to miss the worst of the severe weather. It's still going to stay to the south of us. But like I said, Carrie, as we get into those warmer months, it creeps yep. up each state and we could potentially start to get into that severe weather season um, mm -hmm. as we get more into the spring and the summer months. But right now, um, it's going to stay just to our south and we're going to deal with more rain than anything uh, with these systems. So uh, stay fairly active. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Obviously, you know that uh, here. Um, but if you want to keep tuned to all our local weather information, just go to my website, uh, DopplerTimesWeather.com, and it will keep you updated as we uh, continue to deal with an active spring pattern. So uh, keep you updated over there. Yeah, keep your eyes to the sky, eh? Oh, yeah, always. Yeah. What about uh, the home opener for the Tigers? What's that looking like? Is that Thursday? I think? Dry and cool. What day is that? I think Thursday. Thursday. Okay, let me look. Right now, like I said, we could potentially deal with a little bit of a dry break toward the end of uh, next week. So we could actually be dealing with just a chilly day, uh, right, in, right at Q, right? Uh, we could probably deal with uh, a cooler day with temperatures in the 40s, uh, but definitely staying dry because we'll be kind of past those systems into the early and mid portion of next week. So I think it's going to be chilly, but I think it will be dry. Okay, sounds good. All right, have a good night. We'll see you next week. Oh no, we won't see you next week. I got surgery. <laughs> we're taking next week off well good luck with that and uh we'll be in touch buddy all right thank you sir night mm -hmm. all right let's introduce our guest for tonight she just recently got back uh home to uh arkansas from teaching in alaska please welcome mary gills mclaughlin let me bring her up hi mary how you doing hey everybody i'm great how are you good good doing great good to see yeah. you again yeah it's good to be amongst those who speak with a more nasal accent <laughs> <laughs> well, 
so look, uh, Mary, before we get into um, uh, the weather and Alaska and all that, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You are a transplanted Michigander. I am. I came here because of all those storm systems with snow involved, um, aching joints, whatever. And I thought, you know, I needed an adventure to see how it was to live in the South. I've always wanted to do it. And so it seemed like a great opportunity at the time. So I've been down here almost 10 years. And wow. it's, it's been uh, that long? Wow. yeah, I know. It's been a, a fun ride for sure. The people here have been gracious and I have a tribe of great people that I absolutely am blessed to call my circle. And it's neat to be able to expand your circle and with technology, keeping all the friends involved in Michigan and Garden City, Wayne Westland, Ann Arbor is yeah. great. So yeah. yeah. So the weather's a lot better in Arkansas than Alaska, eh? Well, I mean <laughs> <laughs> that was that caught me off guard. That's funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. It's, if you don't what mind the tornado today? or two. <laughs> yeah, you said it was what, 70 and low humidity there today, sunny? Yeah, 70 and low humidity today. And on the coldest day that I was in Alaska, it was 44 below. And I oh still walked God. home from school. So it, wow. uh, in my Michigan, I'm glad I never got rid of my Michigan winter gear. So yeah, it really yeah. served me well. So. Yeah. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, what made you go and teach in, in Alaska? How did that all come about? Uh, well, I've been a teacher for a very long time, um, approaching three decades. And um, wow, yeah, I started out subbing in Wayne Westland and worked for a charter school company in that started in Michigan for a long, long time. And then I moved down here and taught. Um, and I am currently working as a uh, third party vendor of special education services from, mm -hmm. I work from home. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had an opportunity literally fall into my lap. I had my cell phone sitting on my leg one night and a friend of mine contacted me and said, Hey, you want to go to Alaska? I thought, <laughs> um, okay. What? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had been thinking about, uh, you know, we had some things we'd like to pay off and we'd like to pad our retirement account a little bit. And so I sure. said, sure, tell me about it. And so she did. And we have heard they're recruiting hard in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, and so she had con or been in contact with the recruiter and the recruiter reached out to me and and said, we will uh, pay your way to and from. We will provide housing. We will uh, get you to and from school and we will provide two meals a day. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is get here and commit and pay for it you. <laughs> eight weeks. And so off I went and um, we talked about it and it was a, a good opportunity for, for us to achieve some goals. And so who doesn't want to go to Alaska in January at the literal top of the world, the oh very tip God. top of the state. If you've ever watched Ice Road Truckers, they go to Prudhoe yeah. Bay a lot. Yeah. If you went up to Prudhoe Bay and turned left, you'd go to Utiavik. <laughs> That's now, where now, I was. Is that Barrow, Bar Barrow, Alaska? Point Barrow it goes out into the ocean, kind of like Point Pelee. Uh, okay. So the community that's adjacent to Point Barrow is called Utiavik. It's the native Inupiat name um, for the area. The area dates back 1,500 years. Um, wow. The Inupiat people have been there all that time. Um, the community was known as Point Barrow until about five years ago when they had a community-based election. And mm -hmm. in a kind of a split vote, they decided to reclaim the original Inupiat name. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a neat community, but I didn't realize how far north I really was. Yeah, <laughs> you're really, well, I have a video, a short video you sent me and a bunch of pictures, so we'll get an idea about that. Now, how long were you actually there? I was there for eight weeks. Wow. Yeah, I flew out on January 2nd and I flew home on January, I got home March 5th. Good to be home. Right? ever come up? Sir? Did the sun ever come up? Oh, good question. Yeah. So the sun sets in November. And when I got there in January, it was still dark. And so, um, you know, my head was on swivel when I was walking home from school because, you know, polar bears, seals, 
Arctic yeah. fox, um, yeah. you know, all of those walruses um, are, are there. That's a part of life there. Wow. And so we got sunshine for about 15 minutes on January 27th. And with each passing day, by the time I left in March, it was what we would know as a day and an evening. Um, where I was, uh, where my home was located, my window faced east and I would watch the sun set. Mm. There's a mind bender for you. Yeah, um, really. yeah. Because of the longitude and the latitude and all oh, of those God. things. Um, it, it, I thought maybe at first I was a little bit nuts and it's a dry <laughs> county, so I wasn't <laughs> turkey or anything. <laughs> so, it, but it was it was definitely a perception thing because of the way the, the curvature of the earth and all that good scientific stuff. Now so. you said, you said it was a dry County, but alcohol is a problem there, isn't it? Alcoholism is a significant issue there um, amongst not only the Inupiat people, but um, the other residents who there, who are there. Um, you can bring in alcohol with you. Uh, so if you had a suitcase or if you make a run, a lot of people fly. You cannot go anywhere. There are no roads in. There are no roads out. There are only roads in town. Wow. So people fly to Anchorage to get provisions, okay. um, fly to Fairbanks. Jeez. And so you can bring back alcohol with you. But uh, it is a side hustle there to make bathtub hooch, just like in the mountains, oh um, my gosh. making wow. moonshine. Wow. So it, it is a problem. We actually had an in-service while I was there about fetal alcohol um, syndrome. Mm. And it, it, it's a deal. It is a mm. big problem there. Yeah, so. so sad. So sad. Yep. So tell us about the cost of living there. I mean, that's unbelievable. Some of the prices you shared. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the first thing I want to talk about is housing. Um, yeah. So housing, remember the old Quonset huts? Uh, that's where Quonset huts have gone to die. They, oh, wow. <laughs> they Because they are so utilitarian and they are so well built and well made, mm -hmm. um, people have taken those and made homes out of them, um, businesses, but everything is up on pylons like at you know, the ocean shore because the water does uh, flow over the bank sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're fighting erosion because of global climate change. Um, and by the year, it is estimated by uh, environmentalists that by the year 2050, that particular community will be completely underwater. Oh, um, no. wow. So the houses are up on stilts yeah. and so the average house, like the home that you and Cheryl live in would be about $400,000 wow. um, to rent. It would be probably closer to 2,500 to 3000 mm. uh, a month. And you're comparing that to, I think the average around us is about 15 to $1,800 a month here for rent. Uh, I don't know what it is in Michigan anymore. Um, wow. But yeah, it is a lung well, collapse. <laughs> well, what about employment there, Mary? Is, is unemployment high or? Um, unemployment is, is, so there are opportunities for everybody to work who chooses to. You're talking a community of about 5,000 people, according to the most recent census. Mm -hmm. um, about 65% of the community is Inupiat. And so they have a... Uh, a very strong community where they uh, have their own housing initiatives. They have their own, um, or housing authority rather, they have a community college. They have all kinds of great, um, for lack of a better word, tribal, because they're not organized into a tribe. So mm -hmm. it is a community is uh, okay. how they represent. Um, but they, anybody that wants a job can have a job. There is oil money, every family, because of the fact that the oil sits on sacred ground, um, every family that is Inupiat or native Alaskan uh, Eskimo gets approximately eight to $10,000 a year. Doesn't matter if you're a day old or a hundred years old in your household. So you get a nice substantial sum once or twice a year, they send those checks. Um, hmm. It's estimated, I read a statistic that said 
about 30% of the community is um, also receiving welfare um, mm -hmm. and everybody else has a city job, um, some wow. sort of a government job. They work in mm -hmm. the uh, maintenance and operations facilities with the school districts or somewhere in the community. And teachers are really hurting for teaching, aren't they? Yeah, uh, the teachers, none of the teachers are locals. Um, there are teachers who are there long term. They have moved from other locations. There are some who are native Alaskans, but they are not from that community. They're from maybe Anchorage, a little further south. Mm -hmm. um, the person that I spoke with who had been there the longest had put in his ninth year and he was ready to go home go back downstate. Nine years. Ooh. It is a very utilitarian, very rugged, Tough. very interesting lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. Eight weeks after six and a half weeks, I was ready to come home. I think I would go back. I mean, people have asked, would you go back? Yeah, I'd go back, but I would love to go out into one of the villages. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But the villages don't have hospitals. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you know, and when you do things like trip over your golden retriever and break your shoulder, <laughs> having a hospital is a good thing. What about um, um, law enforcement? Uh, they have law uh, enforcement, right? Or yeah. So let me get my handy dandy notes. I think it was in about 1972, the federal uh -huh. government uh, came in and they agreed in 1971 the community voted against the native claims settlement act but it became law anyway and so the town became a for-profit community in 1972 millions of dollars of revenue from the new law um, and oil money began to flow and so then city services were established like a police force uh, local court systems um, sewers, electricity. Could you imagine living without electricity in 1972? Um, no, no. So, you know, that's just the way of life up there. Wow. So, you know, now that that's over 50 years old, it's, you know, becoming a new era for them. Um, but that was when the sewers came in. Um, oil money is a big deal. It comes from the National Petroleum Reserve, uh, Alaska. Right, uh, the pipeline, yeah. Yes, you would think so, they wouldn't be so so much in poverty with with the oil that they have. I mean, they're oil rich, right? Um, yeah, they're oil rich, but the oil is going to run out. And so, yeah. the the other intriguing thing to me was that the community members did not want to be uh, teachers necessarily in the community. Um, there are people who have gone to college in other locations, but they come back home to do things for their community in a community-based organization. Um, and that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. What I noticed was that if people go away, they do come home. Very slim minority stays away. You know, they, they uh, move to Anchorage or they stay in Anchorage or Seattle. Um, and, yeah, they're they're home people. They they mm. love their community and they're very proud of their heritage. Um, what's been intriguing, what was intriguing to watch within my classroom and the school at large was that this little magical device that we all have has yeah. has yeah. changed. Um, it has changed their community. So suddenly you have kids, you know, we all know kids keep their phones glued to their faces. Yeah. Um, but their language is dying. The Inupiat language is dying. It's on the national uh, registry for um, at, at risk of being a See? lost language. And wow. so Rosetta Stone has partnered <clears throat> with the Kotzebue, which is a little community further south um, mm -hmm. with the tribal or with the community leadership there to create a portal for or program for people to learn the Inupiat language. Mm -hmm. And the the Rosetta Stone people were um, very wise to give the Inupiat leadership controlling interest in how that is um, shared, how it is uh, 
I don't maximized, I guess would be a great way to say it. Um, my paraprofessional in my classroom um, taught me a little bit of the language. It's it's incredibly challenging. I don't think that like our palates are, it is. It's an you app. know, you get used to speaking one way and the palate needs to be used a different way. And all I could do is listen and marvel <laughs> to, the, to the beauty of the language. But yeah. she said her mother participated in doing some of the recordings. Um, mm of the language. Oh, wow. So yeah. I want to play this uh, short video that you sent here. It's uh, like 17 seconds and you can sure. kind of comment on this. It's kind of what you saw probably every day. <laughs> Yeah, it was cold. It, <laughs> it was cold. Um, <laughs> there, you saw the post office, and then you saw a building adjacent to it that had kind of a red roof. That mm -hmm. is the fanciest structure in town. It really? is called the Top of the World Hotel. Um, dignitaries, <laughs> guests um, come to stay there. But just past that hotel building was the Arctic Ocean. Oh wow! Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, where did you stay? Did you actually stay in a house or an apartment? I lived in a house and okay. I was, uh, so the community is the old community, which is where I lived. Mm -hmm. And then there was a dirt connecting road mm -hmm. that had a big lagoon between the, the there was an ocean, the ocean, and then this dirt connecting road, and then a lagoon, and then my neighborhood. Um, okay. And there are numerous lagoons there. Uh, when you're in the air over Alaska, you see beautiful rivers and lagoons everywhere. Yeah, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up pictures here. I, yeah, I'm yeah. assuming that's you flying in. That's in, over Denali. Flying um, in. Yeah, and that's when I started to cry because it was just so beautiful. The, the entire, Yeah, I mean. Wow. I know. Um, so there's, we're entering the Denali National Park. Um over top of it. And there you oh go. It looks gosh. like meringue peaks from my grandma's. Yeah. <laughs> just, looks just like it. Yeah. It was just stunning from the air. You can see the rivers down yeah. below. And oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so it's, much land. I mean, it's just unbelievable it's, how big. It's raw and it's rugged. I have friends who are located, uh, they went up with me. They are in a village called Enetuvik Pass. Um, that's the Arctic Ocean. Mm. Um, and they are 300 miles as the crow flies east of where I was, but it was a, about a two hour flight. Wow. Um, Is it sunset or sunrise? Uh, that would be sunset. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mary, yeah. I have to ask, what is the warmest temperature that it gets where you were at in the summertime? In the summertime, it can get as warm as if it's a really warm day, it can get up to 50 degrees. Really? In the summer? Yeah. In the summer. And so it's yeah. not unusual to see people with their winter hats and, you know, whatever. Um, and you said why, earlier, while you were there, it, it was like living in a desert. It is. The climate mm -hmm. is technically a desert climate because of the relative humidity being so incredibly low. Um, mm -hmm. So like I was saying earlier, when it snows, it's not snow like we know it. It's little chunks of ice coming at you and they're like little Chinese stars <laughs> and, they, and they hurt Holy cow! <laughs> and they wow. hurt. And um, yeah, I would walk home from school every day. It was about a four block walk. And on certain days I would have to wear wind goggles so that you don't physically, your eyes don't get hurt. Right. Um, right. And, Very yeah. dangerous. Wow. Yes. And you keep everything covered and yeah. Um, and we're going to get into like I, I look like the museum and some of their their uh, wear that they wear stuff they wear. I yeah, have, I have another question. Go ahead. Does anything grow in the ground in Alaska? They have. Well, I'll take that back. Out on the tundra. So we think of the tundra as snow and ice. The tundra in the cool or warmer months is. Um, you know, it's got tundra grasses and they have beautiful wildflowers that do grow there. Um, but very, very brief seasons um, for those things. So, yeah, 
There's a really great book I would recommend to anybody. It is kind of a middle grades book, like a junior high level. It's called Ice Whale. Whaling is such an incredible element to this community's existence mm -hmm. um, that it, it, it just matters. They can um, still hunt whale. The, the natives can hunt whale. They do have to report to the Alaska uh, Whaling Commission any okay. time they catch their allotment uh, for the, so they don't call their little villages, they don't call them villages, they call them hubs. Oh. And so the, the hubs can get a total, I think it was like pretty close to 30 whales amongst all of the hubs, there are seven wow. or eight hubs. That's a lot of whales. Yes, and I'm really, I you know, say what you want, it's part of their history, yeah. it's part of their culture, they, but they don't waste any part of the whale. They do they? No part of the whale. And they believe in their tradition that the whale uh, gives themselves to them. Um, yeah. So they don't just go out and harpoon whales. Um, mm -hmm. They go out, they have a, a very systematic approach to it. Um, it's a very prayerful, spiritual uh, thing for them mm. to, to do it. Um, I don't know what pictures you have, but they wear white seal yeah. skin outfits. Like their uh, camouflage. Like their camouflage. Yep. And then they put what I called like little Stonehenge shaped uh, blocks of ice up. And I asked one of my students who was a, a whaling crew member. Yeah, but that's, yeah the book is fantastic. And There's it the really talked about. Yep. They say a whale can live up to two human lifetimes. Um, so this story, I would encourage anybody to watch. I remember this. Yeah, I watch remember this. movie. Um, John Krasinski, Kristen Bell, and Drew Barrymore uh, yeah. were in this movie. And it's called The Big Miracle. Uh, trapped my friend, under the ice, right? Yep, they got trapped under the ice. Their baby um, whale struggled. And two mm. of the whales were able to move on. Um, not giving away the plot because it's history. We all, <laughs> we all know it. But it really was well done. The majority of it was filmed in Barrow. Of course, there's a lot that was done on a soundstage, I'm sure. But it yeah. was a really great story. It's a feel-good story. But yeah. it was a, a good example of partially the mistrust between uh, the natives and the white people. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. that's a very real thing. Yeah. So while I was there, there was a, a festival called Kivik, and it is an annual event where the Eskimos from um, Russia, the Diomede Islands out in the Beaufort Sea and down uh, the coast of the Arctic Ocean, um, wow. in Canada, Greenland, and I believe also from Iceland as well as Alaska, get together. They had not gotten together since 2019 because of COVID. So this was their very first one mm -hmm. um, in three years. And it the it was just, the energy was electric. Um, and of course, these are Ulu knives, which is kind of synonymous with the culture. Um, I put skin in the whale or so you can, so the Ulu knives can be made from like a walrus tusk handle or the, this, these are whale bone. Um, but this gentleman was selling his Ulus for about $300 a piece. They were beautifully crafted, um, probably very well worth the money. I'm just cheap. Um, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um they look sharp. Um, they, and they are very sharp, but I went back to my classroom cause it was hosted at the high school and kind of was feeling sad because I wanted to bring a couple home for my son and husband. And um, my mm -hmm. parents said, oh, my dad makes those. And I said, oh, well, cool. How much does he charge for them? And uh, significantly less. And I said, okay, I'll take two. Oh, <laughs> so, <you go. laughs> and, and his were whalebone. Those were the two I ended up buying. Um, okay. And they were whalebone handles and just okay. really okay, well, pretty special. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. So these uh, these are made from uh, walrus tusk. Okay. And um, also. Is that ivory? Yep. There's some ivory there. The earrings that you see hanging on that kind of brown spinny rack yeah. started at about $80. Mm -hmm. um, the craftsmanship was just beyond compare. I did purchase a pair that are about an inch long and they are made from... Um, 
I want to say walrus tusk, but the whale baleen, whale baleen is, so a bowhead whale is not a whale that tears with its teeth. Mm -hmm. a, a bowhead whale has baleen for teeth and they're in parallel rows going from front to back of their mouth. And they filter the krill when they snort it in mm. and then they filter that krill. And so it'd be equivalent to like fingernail kind of. Oh. Uh, okay. texture and yeah. so the see the black thing there hanging on the earrings those are baleen earrings and okay. the baleen they take out wow. when they're uh cutting up the whale and they'll do beautiful things with the baleen and make beautiful craft pieces with it and um they use it for some other practical purposes within their homes good example of not wasting anything Absolutely. You can learn a lot from them. So this is an example of a whaling camp tent set up. Mm. Um, they set these up on their white so that they can set them up on the ice flow um, mm -hmm. adjacent to the edge of the ocean. And they're, they have a guard a team of people as part of their crew that Make sure there's no polar bears that are coming. Really? Um, yeah, one of my kids was, visitors. Yeah, one of my kids was sharing sharing a story. He was he had been watching and standing guard, waiting for you know anything to come up and warn them, and um, said that a polar bear came up while he was using the restroom there off the side of the ice floe, and he said I was so scared that it was a good thing I was already going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, so this is a head uh, piece that is used during Kivgeik and other ceremonial dances. The gentlemen wear these. Um, Gee, they have they, birds? Where do they get the feathers? So they do have a particular kind of bird that comes along probably about May. They start to fly okay. in. I okay. cannot remember what they are called. Uh -huh. um, now, uh, can you? I don't know if you can pause this. Yeah. If you see the little pieces hanging on the 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 paw of the mitten, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the gentlemen, when they are doing their dances during Kivik's festival, um, they wear these gloves. Wow. And these are made of seal skin, typically, and the pieces of ivory they jangle jingle jangle them because okay. they believe that they replicate the sound that the mother spirit gave to them in the first gift of music and so oh. it's it just really wow. fascinating 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 history and those are probably 150 years old mm. um these are really great examples of parkies that yeah. they make you know, of course they're on dolls and the mucklucks um I was going to buy my granddaughter a homemade pair of mucklucks. They were just Oof. wonderful, but they're $350 a pair. And I, yeah. you can't squawk at the fee because they are so meticulously and beautifully right. made. Um, but she didn't get any, <laughs> so, but the parkies are very practical. Often it's like Arctic Fox fur um, to line them because you just need to stay warm up there. Um the mucklucks are incredibly warm. Often yeah. they will pass their parkies down from generation to generation. My paraprofessional's daughter wore her great grandmother's parky um, gloves and uh, mucklucks and was very proud of that. Wow. Yeah, they're very, yep. So there's um, uh, the daughter's name was Mariah. These are made from beaver. Um, yeah. And so they left the tail on for decoration, but these are probably a hundred years old. Holy cow. Yeah. Priceless. Um, yep. Okay. So these drums are made from hickory wood um, mm -hmm. and that's the underside of it. So when you flip it over, um, the, the people, hang, even the women are in on the party and they just, they have this rhythmic uh, pattern mm -hmm. that they use for, just like with every song, it's a different, yeah, you know, a different harmony, a different melody, and um, the different okay. dances determine what what the song is. This is this is Mariah. These are her <laughs> gloves, the parky. Um, so That's a beautiful quote. 
Isn't it just oh gorgeous God. in its seal skin? Gorgeous. Um, but wow. Mariah is 16 years old and yeah. is very much in love with her culture because they're teaching her to be. Um, yeah. Her mukluks have, I think she said, they they figure they're about 100 years old. They're just as well, um, you know, they're just as in great of shape as they were probably many, many mm -hmm. years ago. And the coat. So when you are looking to purchase a new parky, um, not parka, parky, when you're looking to purchase a new one, it's kind of like choosing between a Christian Dior gown or a Balenciaga gown or, you know, one of those designer names. There's really? certain, and it is women in wow. the community who have made names for themselves mm. for their quality workmanship. And so when you create a, a, a beautiful piece that holds up, your name gets circulated and you probably have made a very good living for yourself making these parkies. Well, it looks very comfortable and very warm. That's for sure. They need that. Yes. Yes. Very much so. And what, what would a new one cost if you were still in Michigan and thought you might need a warm winter coat? A parkie like that would probably cost you anywhere between $1,500 and $5,000, depending on what you want it ornamented with. Yeah. Authentic. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Authentic. So I see why they pass them down as well, you know, for yeah. practical purposes as well. Um, so the next photo. Okay. So I just for the sake of honesty, this is a photo of a photo. Yeah. <laughs> I did not oh, take, we've done that. Yeah. <laughs> Your eagle. I didn't want the original owner to ever come out of the woodwork, but this is um, what we were starting to see because I was leaving just as whaling season preparations were starting. And oh. so, the the crew goes out um, and the in the foreground that boat is not a canoe it's called an umyak and an umyak is made of hickory wood and the ladies get together and they uh, take the seal skins and there's a very specific kind of stitch that causes the seal skin to remain watertight. Wow. And so they spend weeks sewing these seal skins together into the correct shape. And so you can see along the top edge how they're kind of scalloped. And yeah, um, but the point is to create, and this is what they ride out to go whaling in. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. um, they're probably <laughs> 15 to 20 feet long. Um, some yeah. of them, some of the captains now use them as like, scouting boats um, and then they'll take bigger boats out but the ones who are truly remaining um, uh, committed to doing it the old way this is what they do and so there's no motor I, on it there's no motor on it that's it's right nice. it's it's you know yeah, <laughs> it's this um, so the one of my students taught me was that when they go out scouting you'll see the whale's back in the water with the blowhole out of the water because they're sleeping. And I went, Whoa. Oh, Whoa. okay. No way. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so they know where the pod is hanging around. Ah. Um, and so they go out and they then oh capture their whale. There's they bring there. it in. It is a whole festival when they go out whaling and bring it in. And again, this is not an original photo of mine. Yeah. Um, this is at the National Park Museum there. Um, yes, so for every, I don't wanna misquote it. I wanna say for every foot long, the whale weighs a ton. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, so that's a replica um, of a bowhead. Okay, and, that's a bowhead. Mm -hmm, that's a bowhead and they are kind of awkward looking creatures and that's yeah. looking kind of um, from like an 11 o'clock angle back mm -hmm. towards five o'clock and they they're Huge. massive they are massive yeah okay now, you so, had a chance to sample some whale I had three goals when I went up uh -huh. um, one was a financial goal that I'll keep personal. The second one was to eat muck duck, which is whale meat. 
And the third goal was to see the Northern Lights. Um, we saw them. So during Kivik, um, <laughs> they share. So when they capture or when they catch a whale and they get it all cut up, they share it with anybody who wants it in the community. They don't hoard it. The, the crew it does cut? not is keep it. it. it um, <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> it's pickled in this oh, case. So okay. just like with a piece of meat, right? A piece of beef or pork or whatever. There's a million different recipes. Yeah. Same thing for whale. Um, but the gray, uh, the, the white with the red is onions. Um, okay. And then jalapeno and. And the gray uh, is the whale. The onion. Yep. And then the gray is the whale. So my parent pro's name was Maddie Joe, And she asked me if I'd like to try some. And I said, yes, please. And I do not eat. If it swims in the sea or carries its house on its back. I will not eat it. Um, <laughs> but I thought I am in Alaska. I'm at the very northern edge of North America. Gotcha. I'm going gotcha. to try okay. whale. Yeah. So I put a piece of it in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and did one of those, you know, like, mm, thank you. <laughs> is she gone yet oh my god <laughs> but it didn't taste fishy until it hit this back part of your palate really? and then it was oh. like is it real chewy a uh, rubbery or it looks no like no it, it was <laughs> I, I don't know it's kind of like a booger <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean what? okay <laughs> It wasn't, it didn't taste like chicken. It didn't taste like beef. It, it didn't like taste chicken, like no. venison. <laughs> just, and don't ask me how I know what it tastes like. Oh my it, gosh. It, it was, yeah, it was different. And I'm glad I tried it once and I'll probably never rush back to try it again. So, now this I have here, uh, is this where you landed at the airport or? Um, that is, uh, yep. That's where we landed at Utiavik. And what, what was fascinating about landing in the airport um, is, first of all, I knew I had to get landed, unpacked, and be in the classroom the next morning. And I oh, wow. was pooped. <laughs> well, how long the flight was it? So I flew from Memphis to Dallas and had an eight-hour layover. Uh, I flew from Dallas to Seattle and had a six-hour layover. And then from Dallas to Anchorage was late because of weather. There was a bad storm that came in from the West Coast. Oh um, so by the time I arrived in Anchorage for my overnight, it was like 3 a.m. And I had to be back up on the plane at 1130. Oh um, so it was, you know, it was pretty grueling when you're not 25 wow. anymore. You're tired. <laughs> What's the time difference there now? Uh, Alaska time is three hours and they are their own time zone. So oh. they it is 7.51 here in Arkansas, so it would be 4.51 there. Oh, behind you. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is where you land. And they take your luggage, they bring it up to a door, and I promise you it's an Olympic sport where they just chuck it into a <laughs> hole. Chuck it. They don't care. It's just like they <coughs> get it in there. And I think that I think outside they're having a game of who can, you know, create the most destruction. To a oh, piece my of gosh. Wow. So this is the North Slope of Alaska. Um, and you can you it's kind of a language chart. Um, so the North Slope speaks Inupiat. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it, oh, okay. You know, Alaska <laughs> Alaska was purchased from <laughs> Russia, and so you have that Russian influence there. Yes, yes. Um, so and it, probably... Yeah, and it was really cool to have the Inupia people coming from Alaska or from Russia, um, wow. and, and they they have family on both sides. So for them, the Russian conflict is non-existent. It is non all about their people. They don't pay as much attention to the. The, the things that are going on. I wanted to take this photo because these are just a couple of, uh, there's some very good books here um, mm -hmm. that, first of all, they're trying to get their kids to re-engage with the culture mm -hmm. in the school. And so this is one of the little displays that they had. And I took the photo so I could start looking for them. Um, you see some Arctic fox fur um, mm -hmm. on top of a flower. Uh, or made into a flower in the vase. Oh, wow. 
Um, yeah. Arctic foxes were hanging out all around the school. Oh, wow. Um, I never saw one. <laughs> it was one of those cases where it's like, oh, there it goes. Where? Where? <laughs> So, but they're all over. Hey, look at that burger. That looks good. What was that like? Fifty dollars? <laughs> uh, thirty. Oh no. Oh, no, I'm not geez. even kidding. The burger and fries was thirty dollars. The coke oh, was no. about seven. Oh. Um, but at the end of my stay there, I took a group of kids just to kind of celebrate our time together, yeah. and we just had a big time. Um, cool. th that's the only sit-down restaurant in town. Um, if you look out the window, yeah, you, I see. <laughs> you see kind of a little business over there in the background. That's the Mexican restaurant. Um, okay. Pretty good. Okay. But everything is delivered by cab, taxi cab. How, how far is this from your house where you lived? Um, Very far. In the warmer months, I could have walked. I would call it probably a mile and a half. Okay. Um, but when it's 35 below, now I'll just I'll take the $8 cab ride. <laughs> right. right. And it's snowing Chinese stars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's the top of the world hotel. Um okay. about it's very much uh like the Holiday Inn Express. You know, they're neat and clean oh. rooms. They're very yeah. nice. Yeah. Um you do not get a free meal for breakfast. Um and the rooms are about $3.25 a night, which for up there. You know, you know, you've been desensitized to prices when you get down to the Seattle airport and you think, oh, I don't mind paying sixteen fifty for a Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and you didn't see any polar bear, but somebody sent you pictures of polar bear. Afterwards. Yeah. So the week after I got home, uh, a very good friend of mine from Texas, uh, Trudy, uh took these two photographs so right in the background beyond those power lines is the arctic ocean wow. um so the polar bear came up to say hello and they're looking out their window oh and gosh. i think they stayed in for the day yeah <laughs> yeah. I guess so. uh, yeah and it's not unusual to see caribou hanging around um this so <laughs> yeah so there's gnome where the red pin is um in the chuchki sea and then the Beaufort Sea up at the top. Um, so it's halfway between where I am there and where it says Alaska. Um, yeah. You kind of yeah. see a, 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 a haze of white. And that is where the North Slope begins. It's on oh, the okay. opposite side of that Denali mountain range. That is the nation's largest school district by landmass. Um they, of course, cannot meet in the same room ever. So thank God for Zoom. Um, we had staff <laughs> meetings by Zoom. Yeah. Um, the district leadership took airplanes uh, to visit and to connect. Um, so it's not like an inter-school mail situation where you can send documents from one building to another. Um, it, so you were it, quite a ways from Al uh, Anchorage then, huh? Yes, I was, it's about a two and a half hour flight to Anchorage. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And so there's the high school. That's the school you were at? Yep, it's the Barrow High School Whalers. And that is um, a <laughs> frozen a example of their, That's of their, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can just see, you know, everything's, every exterior's metal or T111. It's, it's, everything's very industrial because yeah. it has to be. Nothing is pretty on the outside. Everything's nice on the inside. Um, yeah. Michael Bingo wants to know, I wonder how much a salmon dinner is there? Um, okay, so I can answer that question. The call, the community college has dinners on Friday night and they rotate between um, prime rib, Ooh. They wrote, let's see, prime rib, pork steaks, and then salmon. Wow. And the salmon dinners, I think $45. And the prime rib is 50 and the pork sticks around, I think also about 45, but you get enough where you can eat for the weekend off of that. Okay, now, so if, you're a, if you are a Barrow High School student, you get salmon for lunch. Really? So, wow. Yeah. They serve I it up. I was ask you how the portions were for that cost. Um, well, you mean at the, at the community college, I mean, again, I don't eat seafood, so I would say probably a nice long piece probably the size of a dinner plate oh wow um, 
Okay. Yeah, it was, everybody was happy that went and they said it tasted wonderful. And um, yeah, it's a. Uh, now Don Nicholson says he had those same goals when he moved to Winnipeg, but replaced moose for whale. <laughs> he had moose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any moose, but I was in a meeting on Zoom and the speaker or the presenter was in just outside of Anchorage. And she said, can we please take a five minute break? Um, sure, we don't care. And she said, well, let me tell you why. My dog is outside and wants to come in, but there's a moose laying against my door and the moose won't move, <laughs> so, oh, so uh, I, I have to walk around front and let the dog in the front gosh. door. So. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That the is moose amazing. can do what it wants. Life in Kathy Alaska. Ward says, very interesting. Um, <laughs> Emmy says, not a disposable culture. How beautiful. Yeah, and it, so Emmy, to your point, um, I don't know if you're leaning toward an environmental perspective on it. Um, again, I come back to by 2050, this yeah. community is going to be underwater. Right. And the the sad thing to me was I'm a recycler. I'm a recycling goddess here in yeah, Urban Yeah, yep. and I'm one of about five in my neighborhood. <laughs> but I'm going to do my part. That's sad. That's sad, isn't it? I mean, it really is. I and don't get it. The, the piece for me that made me go, huh, was the fact that kids not only consume no fewer than in my classroom every kid drank at least six or seven sodas a day um but they didn't have a means by which to recycle the aluminum cans really so they are as guilty as creating the problem yeah. and maintaining the problem and sustaining the issue as we are um everywhere else so truly if my community were going to be floating in my lifetime, I would probably be an activist for it. Um, so this is a good example of the frozen tundra. Yeah, um, it's frozen. It's, <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, so. Uh, um, so Cheryl, you'll respect this. You know how your friends ask you to bring souvenirs home, and <laughs> can you pick up some rocks for me? So I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll pick up the tundra, <laughs> and it's just little teeny tiny pebbles, like the half the size of a pea. So I'm <laughs> kicking along and trying to get it out. I kick it out. I pick up a bag full of it, and I put it in a little colander that I had in the sink, and I kind of. Them. Let it sit there to, to, to drain the water off. And I came out in the morning and went, what the oh, heck no. is that smell? No. I had picked up a tundra turd. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so my gosh. <laughs> picked that up, chucked it outside. Oh, no. And brought home the rest of the well cleaned tundra. But the tundra, that top layer of tundra, um, Jeez is underneath that is the permafrost and the permafrost goes down about 1800 feet into the earth. Looking straight ahead is kind of looking toward downtown Utiavik. Oh. Um, there's one bank, it's a Wells Fargo. Um, oh. There's a court system for the borough. Um, there's a jail. There is a local police department. Okay. Um, there's a grocery store where Everything is at least quadruple in price. Yeah. How much were eggs? <laughs> the eggs were cheap. The eggs were only $5. Oh, okay. Um, and I buy my eggs here from a farmer, so I pay three bucks. So I didn't feel like five was that bad. Yeah, but no, my Lay's potato, my beloved Lay's potato chips were $16 a bag. Oh, oh my gosh. And forget the dip. So I actually priced it out because I don't like to cook anymore. My kids are grown and gone. It's not a thing I do anymore very much. Um, it was actually cheaper for me to purchase like lean cuisines and hungry man. And those were like $15 a piece, but it was cheaper for me to eat like that than it was, um, for me to cook. Mm. Cause my first trip to the grocery store was $450 for a week's worth of meals a week. Wow. Yeah. And then my second trip to the grocery store was about 150. So wow. Wow. yeah, it was, it was, I felt well, it was quite an experience. Was it? Yeah. Now talking just briefly about education, yeah. um, 
Alaska is 49th in the state for quality of education based uh, on the presentation of several different resources, USA Today being one of them. Um, 50th is New Mexico. Um, the district superintendent is a gentleman from Australia who has indicated um, he is married to an Inupiat woman from the community. Uh, the goal of the school board is to have no more white teachers there, but to have native teachers. But really? the problem becomes the it's kind of a puppy and a tail thing because the kids don't want to go to college to be teachers. Um, they don't even really want to go to college. They want to commit to doing things that are more driven toward their cultural heritage, wow. whaling, fishing, um, caribou wow. hunting and living off the land, living that subsistence lifestyle. They're, they're, you know, who are we to change that? But I, when I went to the national park museum, um, I walked in and they were playing a video of the Kivik Festival. And one of my students stole the show this year as a dancer. And he was being featured on this little, uh, you know, this loop that they were playing. So I walked up and I, as my personality, I was, oh my gosh, that is student so-and-so. Look <laughs> at him go. I know him. And the gentleman that was there was a, a community member. And he turned around and he said, how do you know that student? And I said, oh, well, he's in my class. Uh -huh. And he said, well, that's my nephew. Because, of course, 5,000 people in the community, everybody's related. Right, and right. He, and I got to talking. Well, he works at the museum. So he took me on this wonderful tour and shared with me that the majority of the community members do not want their kids to have a Western education. They right. want their kids to be educated in the traditional ways. And I said, okay, fair enough. You know, I'm not, I just, I'm there to learn. I'm not there to bring my thoughts and all of that. Yeah. But I said, if you are interested in just removing the Western education system from your community, all the funding is going to go with that. And he said, that's fine. We don't care. We lived for a thousand years without it. Yeah. We'll be fine. Um, and I said, yeah, but my question then becomes, what about medical care? Um, right, right. Because you're not sending people out to learn. Nursing um, and stuff. To learn those skill sets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people are not choosing. I'm not saying they're not sending them out. Their people are not choosing to go do that. They're choosing right. to. I couldn't even get my hair cut because there was no stylist there. Oh, my gosh. No so, trades or anything. Yeah. Correct. Um and so it was just interesting. It wasn't right. It wasn't wrong. It was just their way of life. And it was really more of an education for me than me for them. Um, so let me ask you, um, they're hurting for teachers. Did they welcome you? I mean, were they happy you were there or, or not so happy? <laughs> um, when you say they, who do you mean? Well, I mean, who, like the superintendent wants to get rid of all the white teachers. I think that they were grateful because I'm a special education teacher. And so, okay. you know, they had certain obligations to the federal law that they had to meet that was difficult. Mm -hmm. It was difficult yeah, it for them to, to get that special ed situation resolved. And so they were grateful that I was there. But um, what I and, and others who were there in my position, um, there was not a lot of support. So we just yeah. kind of worked off of our um, dazzling smiles and charming personalities and did the best so, we could with the paperwork. And yeah, really, my tough, tough mm -hmm. position. I mean, how, what did you teach them? Did you teach them math and spelling and history? Or, or So anybody that has a student with an IEP or an individualized education plan knows that each educational plan has goals for that student. So okay. if this student, if Charlie Brown needs to focus on learning these three things about math, then that's what we worked on. Okay. Um, and in this particular group's case, they were all pretty similar. And so it was easy to do group teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so I had five different classes that I taught, uh, two ELA classes, a workplace math, um, work skills, like looking forward to the future for jobs. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so one of the battles became, 
I don't want to write. I don't need to need, I don't need no stinking writing was essentially the, the <laughs> idea. And I said, okay, well, let's, you know, let's just talk about this. Um, do you need to know how to communicate with the whaling commission? Well, yeah. How are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're yeah, right. Okay. Right. I'm yeah. down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so once, you know, when I first came in, the, you know, this, this is the bane of any teacher's existence. Mm -hmm. the phone. Um, and so I had kids that were literally FaceTiming while I was trying to teach. Oh, and Wow. It, you How know, do you get their attention? Wow. Uh, I poured a smack down and <laughs> phones put away. And then yeah. I have wonderful friends from Michigan and New York and Arkansas and all these places who said, what do you need? And I said, I need junk food stat. Yeah. I need chocolate. I need yeah. wise box stuff. And man, people had it up there. Right. And so I had a huge box filled with, you know, anything that, it, because there's, everything is so expensive there to buy a Hershey bar, they're $6. Oh, so wow. you're not going to just go buy a toffee bar or whatever you want. A package mm -hmm. of popcorn is $15 for a box of, um, you know, pop secret. And yet they seem to have money for what the alcohol and cigarettes, tobacco, right? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, these, these folks sent me this stuff. And so when this box arrived, I let the kids open the boxes and oh boy, wow, can we have that? Yup. Hold on a minute though. And I hoarded it all up beside me. Yeah. And I said, here's what you got to do. Got to do your work. You got to stay in class because they would walk out of class. So you had to okay. reward them. Basically but that's, reward but that's, them. A, that's a national problem. Kids getting up and just walking out of class. Um, wow. So yeah. they would be on the phone, walk out of class, and they wouldn't do their work, and they would cuss me out. And I'm like, oh, wow. who are you talking to? I know you're not talking to me like that. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so by week four, they were wrapped uh, right, right around there. And uh -huh. kids that hadn't come to school had gotten the word. They were coming to school. Um, it was really, really, yes, bribery does work wonders. <laughs> <at me. laughs> no shame in that game. Kathy um, Ward, she says, they're too busy filleting whale to become something else. <laughs> and that, you know what? That's true. And it's true. They want, that's what they want. That's though. what they want. And I want them to have that. And, you yeah. know, I wonder if there's ever going to be a question of secession um, for them. Yeah. If yeah. they don't want the funding, if they don't want to deal with the Western education and all the rules that come with the federal funding, yeah. that was a conversation that this docent and I had. And Might he become said, their own country or something. Yeah, he, he said, we just want to be our own independent state, just like the rest of the Native Americans who oh. are on tribal lands. Michael Bingo, did you drink a lot while you were there? LOL. <laughs> just water. You when did. I got on that airplane, um, <laughs> I don't want to make myself sound like a lush, but I had gone eight weeks without a glass of wine and, you know, I'm not a big drinker, but I do enjoy a nice glass of wine, but yeah. plug this, the, <laughs> the Alaska airlines, if you ever have a chance to fly Alaska air, they fly all over the country now. Wonderful oh. airline, oh. just high praise, but they sell wine in a, like a Capri Sun or not in a Capri, like in a, a Mott's apple juice box. Oh, and okay. I told the, the flight attendant when I got on that plane, I want two of those boxes. I want them right there. Here's my credit card. I don't care how much they cost. <laughs> <laughs> squirt, Moose. squirt, 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 squirt. It was a Moose good flight. It was a great show. I was in Alaska about 15 years ago and he loved it. You know, it's it 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 has a draw. I can't wait to go back. I would love to go to Fairbanks and to Anchorage. Not in the winter, though. Yeah, I would go in the winter. I would, would absolutely you? go in the winter. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I would see the Northern Lights. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, you did see the Northern Lights, didn't you? I cried like a baby. Do you have any of the photos? You know, I don't. I, I thought don't. I sent them to you. Um, yeah, I don't think I... That's what I said. You've sent so many. I think we're going to have to do another show on Alaska. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm down. But the, the Northern Lights are, of course, depending on your location on the planet... They are yeah. a specific color. Um, up there, they are green. 
and there was one the the native uh her the the idea is that you cannot speak when you are observing the the lights because you don't want to anger the great spirit and so <laughs> i walked outside and i took a look up and i see this swirl like a chandelier swirl of wow of just brilliant green and I'd never seen them in my life and I'm getting all weepy and I looked up and I just went that's like watching a baby being born it was oh, man. phenomenal isn't it, it crazy it, it was it was just crazy if you don't um, you know have awesome. a, a greater being in your life go see the northern lights it was amazing all right. Mrs. Chat had to leave the studio. She says goodbye. It was great seeing you. Oh, Mrs. Chat. <laughs> so well, yeah. look, Mary, anything else you want to cover? Um I, yeah. So let me see. I took some it is the northernmost city in the United States and the ninth most northern in the world. Um only two percent of the earth's surface is further north than Utiavik. Um right. it is known as the gateway to the Arctic. Yeah. And the Whalebone Arch is a popular tourist destination. Um, it is located 320 miles further north than where Santa Claus lives. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. So, that yeah, it's, it's that just something. If you ever have a chance to book or have been on the fence about booking a tour of any kind to Alaska, save your pennies, make it a priority. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, what uh, everybody tells me. So, yeah. So, well, thank Mary, you. I can't tell you how joyful it was to see you and have you on again. I really appreciate Thanks. you sharing all this incredible journey with us. Uh, yep. Come back anytime, okay? Well, hey, I'm happy to do that. And thank you to everybody for indulging me. I appreciate it. We had a lot of people in there tonight. So, uh, yeah, it's going to get some good views, I think. Yeah, shoot me an email if anybody has any questions. I'd love to talk. Yeah, the email is up on the screen there, heavenlypenwriters at gmail.com. How'd you come up with that? Um, I'm a ghostwriter and do oh. all kinds of writing for people for I content. Have show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a content writer as well as an educator and a ghostwriter. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing everything with us. It was great. All right. Well, Shout out, Carrie. Love you guys. And I Love will you. talk to you later. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Wow. That was awesome. Huh? Pretty interesting. Yeah. Quite a journey. All right. Let's get Joe Bartley in here real quick. And then we're going to close out the show with uh, some community announcements. So stand by for Joe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tax Talk with Joe Bartley from J and J Taxes and more. So, one of the the more popular questions that I get uh, usually once a week is, "Can I claim Junior on my taxes?" So, uh, Junior has has went off and, and gone to college. Now, technically, he is still your dependent. As long as he's a full-time student, he's going to be your dependent. Even if he's working and making money, if he's going to college full-time, generally you're going to claim him as uh, a dependent, and you're going to be able to take the write-offs, which include the dependent write-off, as well as any education credits, which can be pretty good sometimes. Now, Junior has to remember that when you claim him, he or she, of course, can't claim themselves on their taxes. Now, they're going to still do their taxes, but they're going to check the box saying that somebody can claim them on their tax return. So uh, it gets to be kind of confusing, but as long as they're a, a full-time student, the parents can still claim the, the child. So um, that hopefully takes care of that. Again, that's a very uh, common question that, that we hear quite a bit. Even if the, the child is is working and making money, full-time student, parents can claim. So hope that helps. Uh, we are getting 
down to the wire here tax wise we're down to the last few weeks of course the due date this year is april 18th so if you haven't made your appointment yet uh with your tax professional i'd strongly recommend you do that because i know uh my my appointment book is filling up very fast and uh and slots are getting pretty tight so you want to get that done right away don't put off to the last minute uh Obviously, if, if it's going to be to the last minute, um, there's also, you can also do an extension, uh, but, but you know, there are rules with that, and we'll go over that maybe next week. So, again, this is Joe from J&J &J Taxes and more. Uh, I'm at 29217 Ford Road, Suite 104 in downtown Garden City. You can reach me by phone number 734-523-8291. But the best way to get a hold of me is through email, and that is joe at jnjtaxesandmore.com. So hope that helps. Hope everyone has a great week. All right. Good information, huh? Yep. All right. Let me just do uh, some quick shout-outs here. We had a lot of people in there tonight. <clears throat> Barb Reddy's in there. Michael Bengal. Uh, Patty Fix. Kathy Ward. Uh, former Mayor Randy Walker, now Director of Veterans Affairs downtown. Uh, Garden City Fire Chief Kathy Harmon is in there. John Murray is in there, former candidate for mayor. Uh, let's see. Emmy Thurn is in there. How you doing? Thren, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, Derek Parton from D&D &D Sports Chat's in there. Ed Wilhite from Hogs Backyard Barbecue. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see, Moose, um, Moose James is in there. How you doing, Moose? I believe that's Marty, but we'll call you Moose. <laughs> Shannon Coffee from, uh, Notary Babe is in there. How you doing? Hope you're feeling good. And several more we have in there, but I can't see them. Kelly Bailey's in there. She's going to be our guest on our show coming up, uh, next month. We're just around the corner. Dan Bartley is also in there, the other half of D&D Sports Chat. All right, moving on. Uh, the next city council meeting is going to be April 3rd, 7 p.m. in the council chambers located at 6000 Middle Belt Road. These council meetings are a good way for you to get involved and voice any concerns that you may have, and uh, hope you do. All right, let's get to community announcements. Okay, Mike, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Kerry. All right, let's bring Mike in here. Well, that will be the day. Time for you make me cry. Yeah. You say you're gonna leave. You Mike, you know it's a lie. Cause when I die. <laughs> All right. Radcliffe Community Center. Their new location. Uh, there are. Open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Staff at the Radcliffe Center will work with Wayne County veterans on several key services, including medical and food assistance, utility payments, clothing vouchers, bus passes, home repairs, and more. Yeah, this is a great deal. You don't have to go downtown anymore. You can go right over to Radcliffe. Right. Very, very good. Okay, a poet linen drive. Give the gift of warmth and comfort to a dog in need. March 5th through April 30th, sports venue bar and grill. We're collecting clean towels, blankets, and comforters for the DACC. Compost, res re compost resumes <laughs> April 3rd. Compost must be put out on your regular trash day. Please put compost in brown bags or marked garbage cans. Yard waste stickers are available at DPS and City Hall. Bags or cans cannot weigh more than 50 pounds. Branches may be no longer than four feet in length. And bundled separate compost collection from garbage collection by separated by five feet. Yard waste placed in in improper container or mixed with regular garbage will not be collected. Right, very important, you gotta follow those rules. 
I just wanted to mention real quick, uh, Mike, I got an email from Pastor uh, Combs from <clears throat> the uh, Garden City First United Methodist Church. He wanted me to mention that they are having a massive food giveaway this Saturday, April 1st, in honor of Cassie Taylor. She de She's a deceased part uh, parishioner who uh, love giving uh, and feeding the to the needy. Um, oh, nice. The event's going to be at the church. Um, TAP, T-A-P, uh, program Together Against Poverty is heading up this event. The address is 6443 Merriman Road in Garden City. Drive up, wait in line around 11 a.m., and you'll be served groceries for about a week. Wow. We desperately need volunteers. They're looking for volunteers. They ask that the volunteers uh, help sort bag, sort and bag food and help clean up after this event. Volunteers, please come at 8 a.m. and enjoy a continental breakfast. The contact person for TAP is uh, Director Donald Beasley. His phone number, 313-475-3416. Once again, that's 313-475-3416 if you'd like to volunteer for the food giveaway. And Thank that you. is at the uh, Garden City First United Methodist Church, right across from Barson's Nursery. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Shannon Coffee, the Notary Public. She will do mobile notary, vi virtual notary, and loan signing agents. You yeah. can contact her at 734-469-8821 or... Go to www.notarybabeschan.com. Correct. Garden City oh, Cornhole. Cornhole. Eight weeks in playoffs. Spring is going to run from March 30th to June 1st from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Radcliffe Center. And the summer program will run from June 1st to July 27th from 7 to 9 at the Ice Arena at, North, at uh, 200 North Log Cabin Road. The cost is $100. It's a lot of fun, Cornhole. Yeah. Okay, we need you. Volunteers needed for the Garden City Meals on Wheels. Apply at the Maplewood Center, 37735 Maplewood and Garden City, or call 734-793. Uh, what is that? 1874. Yep. One stop Easter shop and raffle giveaway. Come shop with us for a chance to win in our raffle giveaways. Our vendors have lots of gifts perfect for Easter baskets. This is going to be on from Saturday, April 1st to Friday, April 8th. Uh, I think that's for every. Yeah, well, the dates don't work. Friday, April 8th would be, would not be after Saturday, April 1st. Okay, let's see. So the 1st is a Saturday and the 8th is a Saturday. So, yeah, that should be Saturday, April 8th. Oh, okay. Yeah. For, every, for every $20 you spend in the mar Maker's Market, flowers in the mitten or Miss Michigan Sweet Treats can be a combination of all shops get a ticket and re-enter to win a basket that's full of our vendors' items or an Easter arrangement. Winners will be announced on Saturday, April 9th. <laughs> Actually, April 8th. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, they'll get it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Craft Day, Easter Bunny Flower Pot, Saturday, <laughs> April 1st, uh, 11 a.m. at the Radcliffe Center, $10 admission. All ages are welcome. Register online at gardencitymi.org slash parks or in person at the Radcliffe Center. Uh, this will be located at 1751 Radcliffe Street. Yeah, Easter right around the corner. Yes, it is. We're talking about uh, what? Yeah, anyway. Uh, Easter Vendor Craft Show, <laughs> April 2nd, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., a dollar admission fee, door prize, and raffle at the Via W Post, 3323 Harris Cure at 1055 South Wayne Road in Westland, Michigan. 
over 40 vendors, food trucks, raffles, and more. And you can take free photos with the Easter Bunny and vendors info contact Jen Bowers at 734. There's another problem. 812. 812. Oh, the phone number is yeah. it's continued on the next line. Right. 734 812 5968 only. Yep. Middle school college night, Schoolcraft College open house. Hmm. Monday, April 3rd from 5 to 7 at Schoolcraft College Visitech Center. Learn the steps to take in high school to prepare for college. Yeah, April 3rd. It'd be very valuable. Garden yeah. City Senior Center Thrift Shop, located at the Maplewood Center, 31735 Maplewood Street in Garden City. The hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2, and you can get a $2 bag sale every day. Donations are accepted from Monday through Saturday. Garden City Parks and Recreation Easter Egg Hunt, Saturday, April 8th. Mm. Free event. There will be three different age groups, three and under, four through six, and seven through ten. Search for over 12,000 eggs. Jesus. Each egg, each age groups will have 15 magical eggs mm. that can be turned in for a special prize. Ooh. Easter Bunny arrives at 9.15. The hunt begins at 9.30. It's a free event. Bring your own bag or basket. No need to register. Garden City Project Graduation Fundraiser at Sports Venue. Uh, 6327 Middle Belt Road in Garden City. On April 8th from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. 50-50 raffle baskets, big goods. Donations greatly appreciated. Cool. Oh, beginners, watercolor painting. Students will learn the basics of watercolor painting over a five-week session. Price is $50 for the five-week session. Uh, first or third grades are going to be Mondays at 4.30 to 5.30, April 10th to May 8th. And fourth and fifth grades will be Thursdays from 4.30 to 5.30, April 13th to May 11th at the Radcliffe Center. Neighborhood Watch is back, second Tuesday every month, 7 p.m. at Garden City Police Department. Share with your neighbors. Next meeting will be April 11th. Don't get scammed. Learn how not to be a victim of scams, utility worker impersonations, pigeon drops, police impersonators, and computer and phone scams. Classes conducted by retired Sergeant Robert M. Haig of the Detroit Police Department. All classes are free. Uh, April 12th, 6 p.m. at the Garden City Library. Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah. Unfortunately, they, they prey on the, uh, the elderly a lot. So oh, they yeah. <clears throat> okay, the next mayor's forum, forum will be in the council chambers at City Hall on Wednesday, April 12th at 5 p.m. It's an open discussion, free and open to the public. Talk openly, share opinions, ask burning questions. So Mayor Jacobs would welcome you. Jewelry making. Garden City Senior Center presents jewelry making with Angie's adornments on the second Thursday of April. Every month, starting April 13th, from 11 to 2, a $10 registration fee. This is at the Radcliffe Center. And this is limited to ages 18 and over. Ah, the great big race. Yeah. April 15th, doors open at 6. Post time, I think it's actually at 7, but just get there at 6 and it gives you time to get some food and stuff. Yeah. Tickets are $20. Uh, the Kiwanis, has them, Kiwanis members have them available. It's going to be at St. Thomas the Apostle, mm -hmm. 31530 Beachwood and Garden City. It'll be fun. There'll be food. There'll be basket raffles, 50-50 raffles, cash bar. Buy your pig bucks and place your bets. Come by it on your favorite pig to win. I guess we got 35 pigs entered. Wow. And don't forget, 
bet on the chat, Meister. That's oh, our yeah. Team. So we hope to see you. Okay. Arting at Home Workshop, Arting at the Hall, April 15th, 1 to 4 p.m., $55 fee, uh, 3144 South Wayne Road, 734-658-1108, contact Barb. Register now. Uh, join us and create a work of art and support the Notre Dame Social Club. And Garden City Varsity Palm Tryouts will be, there's a mandatory parent meeting April 7th. At is that 6 p.m. and three day. Oh boy, starting in April 17th at 4 p.m. Yep, April 19th. Yep, 19th, 20th at 4 p.m. Okay, at the high school cafeteria. All right. Yeah. They need to make these flyers bigger. I'll have to tell them. <laughs> yeah. I'd, like this. That's perfect. My, yeah. My 80 year old eyes can't read that <laughs> fine print. Uh, the Friends of Garden City Public Library are having a used book sale Wednesday, April 19th from 9 to 7 30, and Thursday, April 20th from 9 to 5 30. Located at Garden City Radcliffe Center, 1751 Radcliffe Street. Emmy wants to know, is there a link to visit and review the community events advertised on the show? Emmy, well, yeah. uh, this yeah. show is recorded. And yeah. as soon as we're done, you can watch it on Facebook or you can go to YouTube and watch it. Just search for GC Community Chat. All our videos are over there. And you can pause it and uh, check out all the great events going on in the community. So that's what I would suggest. Yep. That's the best way, huh? I would think so. Yep. Jukebox bingo. Played like regular bingo, but with music. Uh, hosted by Digital Mix Entertainment. Wednesday, April 26th from 1 to 3 at the Radcliffe Center. Cost is $8. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rogers and Hammerstein's Oklahoma. This is at the high school. going to be at the high school O'Leary Auditorium on mm -hmm. April 27, 28, and 29 at 7, and April 30th at 2 o'clock. Yep. $12 tickets, eight for students and seniors, 15 tickets at the door, it says. Okay. Well, Microsoft's good. Office for Beginners, ages 13 and over, learn the basics of Word. Excel and PowerPoint in this five week, is it a th or three week course? Yeah. $30 for the three week course. It's on Tuesday evenings starting May 2nd. Yep. Six to seven. Six that's to pretty seven. good. That's, uh, if you can yeah. learn Excel and all that, man, that's, that's learning something. Yeah. I, I know how to use some of that, but I think I would, I would uh, improve my skills immensely. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, a Mother's Day celebration at the Garden City Senior Center, Friday, April 12th, from 12 to 3. Tickets are $20. Tickets go on sale April 7th. Live music weekend. Come back. Catered lunch by Kathy's Catering. They do a very good job. Mm -hmm. Giveaways, 50-50 raffle. And Mother's Day geraniums. Uh, Garden City Thrift Shop volunteers are presenting that. Volunteers will be handing out free four-inch potted geraniums to moms and grandmas. You must be at least 50 years old. You will be located at the Maplewood Street side of the building Friday, May 5th, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Maplewood Center. Cool. Lucky Squirrel Flea Marketing Vendor Shop, the first one of, I think there's three or four of these. Yep. It's going to be on Saturday, May 20th, from 10 to 3 at the Ford Road Middle Belt Town Center Plaza. Yep. Westlands Farmers Market, Farmers and Artisans Market, 
runs from May 25th to October 12th from 7 to 3 on Thursdays. August 3rd market will be closed. For vendor application and market policies, visit www.westlandfarmersmarket.com. <laughs> Wayne Open Air Farmers and Artesian Market every Wednesday at the Notre Dame Hall starting May 31st. Uh, runs from 3 to 7, 3144 South Wayne Road in downtown Wayne. This is she was our guest last week. Okay. Tutoring tots, teaching others their strengths. Demita Dubois, Mrs. D, owner of certified tutor. I think Garden City was at. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, well, Garden City DF. Yeah. Virtual and in person tutoring at tutoring tots at yahoo.com. 313-932-1201 or 313-623-1866 K-12 all year round. Yeah. She's a busy lady, I'll tell you that. I guess so. Here's another one, or not yet, but I'll, it's coming up. The producers of Mel Brooks musical. Uh, this is going to be a, at uh Inspire. The, yeah, the Inspire Theater. I believe tickets are twenty dollars. I'm not mistaken, but you go we'll to ticketweek.com to get those. Yeah, we'll find out more as we get yeah. closer. Okay, the 26th annual Autos for Autism Car Show. This is huge. Yeah, you're you're gonna be a judge, and I'm gonna be a tally of of ballots for the awards and so forth. Yep, we're honored to be asked. Yes, we That's, are. This is Monday, June 19th from 4 to 9. Pray for weather to be warm, but not too warm. <laughs> right. Boy, it's there's been some hot. Middle School, 1851 Radcliffe near Ford Road and Wildwood. Uh, live music by Bonnie and the Working Girls, plus special guests working in uh, delicious foods by R&J Smoked Meats, merchandise, raffles, lots of trophies, dash plaques, for the first 300 vehicles, vehicle entrance, motorcycles are welcome. Register, sponsor, or donate online at www.autosforautism.com. And you need information, you can call Lisa Clark at 734-323-3010. Or sign up like I did today at the Qantas meeting with Kim Marquette, 734 812 yeah, it's a big, big event. Here's that other one. Uh, Demita's wedding official facilitator, notary, and other professional services, a themed, exotic, erotic, character, and unique weddings. I don't know who this sounds. Ooh. <laughs> uh, fantasy wins, weddingsday.com. Call 313-932-1201. Yeah, she does it all. I guess. Save the date. Join us on August 9th for our annual Cruising with Step Drive-In Movie. This free drive-in movie will take place at Steps Western Wayne County Resource Center located at 450 South Wayne, South Benoit in Westland. More information to come in soon. Yeah, Chief Harmon says that... Uh... The autos for autism sure has grown. It sure has. That's oh, gosh, it's huge. It's huge. All right, that's all I got. Okay. Well, that's we'll see you in two to, weeks, huh? We're ready to close this out, eh? Yeah. Once again, we're always looking for guests to be on the show. If you're interested or you know someone who might be interested, we'd love to hear from you. It's very easy. Just email us at gccommunitychat at gmail.com or message us on Facebook. Doesn't matter what community you live in, we want to hear from you. We're always doing uh, shows remotely, so uh, you can do it from the comfort of your home or office. And uh, I'm getting ready to actually think about opening the studio back up. So, oh, really? We, yeah, we may be doing uh, in studio shortly. I will let you know. You can come on the show and share your information with us and the surrounding communities. Contact us today. We look forward to hearing from you. 
All right, just a quick update. My knee surgery has been moved up to April 3rd, which is next Monday. So uh, I'm still going to be taking Thursday off the 6th, but we'll be back April 13th, okay? Okay. So we will take Good care of that. that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Also, mark your calendars for April 20th when our guest will be Kelly Bailey, who started mm -hmm. Garden City Gives a Boot. Uh, she collects donated new and gently used boots for homeless veterans. She'll be here to tell us all about it, how she got that started. And she will also be at the Lucky Squirrel events as well. So there you go. Get these dates on your calendars, and we hope that you'll be able to join us live. And with that said, Mike, I think we're ready to call this a podcast. Podcast, podcast, podcast. podcast. Right. Hey, we want to thank our special guest, Mary Gills McGoffin, wow. for yeah. the great story and information about Alaska. Wow, that was amazing. Sure. If you would like to contact Mary for more information, you can email her at heavenlypenwriters at gmail.com. That's P-E-N writers. And a uh, big thanks to my fantastic co-host, meteorologist Dr. Tom Iwinski and Mike Jones. Great job as always. Mike, any final thoughts before we go? Uh, COVID stuff has been going up, so yep. vaccinated, please. Yep. Westland had 11 cases the other day, and I think Garden City had two that were reported, two or three. So, But they are on the rise. Canton's high, too. Dearborn. Also, a huge thank you to each and every one of you for sharing part of your time with us tonight. I know it was long, an hour and 46 minutes. Wow. wow. We covered a lot of Alaska. That's how big it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us uh, tonight and uh, also over the years. We really appreciate it. Don't forget, this show will be available right after we sign off tonight on Facebook. So we hope that you'll catch it later at your convenience, especially if you tuned in late tonight by going to facebook.com slash gcchat, and feel free to share the show with your friends as well. Also, catch us on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at community chat show. You'll find not only this show, but all of our past shows as well. And please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. We would appreciate that. Now, as we do at the end of uh, all of our shows, we want to thank all the healthcare workers, first responders, police and fire, everyone on the front lines who serve and protect us every day. Uh, we can't thank you enough. Be safe. And we want you to know that you and your families are in our thoughts and prayers every day. And when you see any of these heroes, please let them know how much you appreciate them. Remember the success of a community depends on the community. So please support your local businesses and please don't hesitate. Like Mike said, don't hesitate, vaccinate, get that booster and also your flu shot, protect yourself and others. Very important. Very important. And Mike, if you see something. Say something. Absolutely. We got to look out for one another out there. For all your weather information, be sure to head on over to doppertimesweather.com. It's got a great user-friendly website over there. Uh, let's see. We will see you right back here uh, April 13th for show number 617. Remember, no show next week. Um, so until then, we hope that you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to contact any of us here at the chat for any reason, once again, our email, gccommunitychat at gmail.com. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Let us know how we're doing or what you'd like to see more of. Thanks again for watching and all the comments. We really appreciate it. Please have a safe rest of your week, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Mike, take care, bud. You too. Good luck, Carrie. Thank you. I appreciate it.